Binary octal decimal and hexadecimal system and operation on binary numbers. Binary. It is also called as base 2 and it represents any number using two digits. Example, 0 and 1. Octal from the word octagon which means an 8-sided polygon. So, octal, also called as base 8, it represents any number using 8 digits. So, the numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, all in all, there are 8 numbers. Decimal, also called as base 10, and it represents any number using 10 digits. So, the numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, it, all in all, there are 10 numbers. Hexadecimal system, also called as base 16. So, from, so why is it called uh, base 16? So, we can think of it as hexa, which means hexagon, which has 6 sides, while this decimal, we have, uh, diba, 10. So, 6 plus 10 is equal to 16. That is why it is called base 16. It represents any number using 10 digits and 6 characters. So, the numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, all in all, there are 10 numbers. While the 6 characters are A, B, C, D, E, F. In this video, we're going to talk about number systems. The first number system that you need to be familiar with is the decimal system. Now, when you hear the word decimal, what do you think of? Think of the prefix deci. What does that mean? When I hear the word deci, I think of one-tenth of a whole. For example, there's ten decimeters in one meter. I also think of the word decade. A decade corresponds to 10 years. And so deci is associated with 10. And in fact, the decimal number system is a base 10 system. And so what this means is that there's 10 different numbers in the decimal system. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So that's a total of 10 numbers. Now, this system is used for everyday counting. For example, 12 or 36 or 468. We use the decimal system to represent numbers. And it works pretty well. Now, the next system that you need to be familiar with is the binary system. So when you hear the prefix by, what do you think of? By means two. And so the binary system is a base 2 system. It's very useful for computers or any type of digital circuits. There's only two numbers here, 0 and 1. In a typical digital computer, 0 means off, 1 means that the system is in the on state. Next we have the octo system and when you hear the word octo or octa, what do you think of? I think of an octagon. An octagon is basically a polygon with eight sides. So octa means eight. So the octal number system is a base eight system. So there's eight numbers that we can use in this system. The first being zero, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's a total of eight numbers, including zero. Next, we have the hexadecimal system. Now, what is meant by the prefix hexa? Hexa, think of a hexagon. A hexagon has six sides. And so hexa means six. We know decimal corresponds to 10. And so six plus 10 will give us 16. Therefore, the hexadecimal system is a base 16 system. And so the numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have all ten numbers in the decimal system, but we also have six letters. And so those letters are A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now A corresponds to 10 in the decimal system. B in the hexadecimal system corresponds to 11 in the decimal system. C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, F is 15. So that's a total of 16 numbers, including zero. Now let's talk about how we can convert a decimal number to a binary number and into an octal and a hexadecimal number using the technique called successive division. So let's say we have the number 348. If you see a subscript 10, that means it's in the base 10 system, which means it's a decimal number. So the first thing you want to do is take 348 and divide it by 2. So if you type that in, you'll get exactly 174. So it's 174, remainder is 0. Next, take 174 and then divide that by 2. So that's exactly 87. So it's 87, remainder 0. Next, if we take 87 and divide it by 2, we're going to get 43.5. So it's 43, remainder 1. But first, let's write it like this. So this 43 gets transferred here. And then to get the remainder 1, you multiply 2 by 0.5, and that will give you the remainder 1. I'm going to write my answer like this for now. Now, if we take 43 and divide that by 2, that's going to be 21.5, which is 21, remainder 1. And then we need to take 21, divide that by 2. So that's 10.5, which is 10, remainder 1. And then 10 divided by 2 is exactly 5, so 5 remainder 0. And then 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, so 2 remainder 1. And then 2 divided by 2 is exactly 1, so 1 remainder 0. And then 1 divided by, I'm running out of space here, 1 divided by 2, that's 0 0.5, so 0 remainder 1. What we have on top is the least significant bit, and this here is the most significant bit. Now you can find your answer just by looking at all of the remainder values, which is here. And so that's the binary number that's equivalent to 348. So you need to read it from the bottom to the top. So the answer is 1, 0, 1, 0, and then 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So that's how we can convert a decimal number into a binary number using successive division. Now let's convert this number into an octal number in the base 8 system. So if we look at the last example, where we converted 348 into a binary number, we were dividing it by 2, because binary, it's based on the base 2 system. By means 2. The octal system is based on the base 8 system. So instead of dividing it by 2 and collecting the remainders, we're going to divide it by 8 this time. So 348 divided by 8. That's going to be... 43.5. So this is 43 remainder. Now to find the remainder, multiply 8 by 0.5. So 8 times 0.5 is 4. So it's 43 remainder 4. Next, take 43 and divide it by 8. And this will give you 5.375. So it's 5 remainder and then multiply the 8 by 0.375. 8 times 0.375, that will give you 3. Next, take the 5 and divide it by 8. Now, 5 is less than 8, so we can say that 8 goes into 5 0 times with a remainder of 5. But if you do 5 divided by 8, you're going to get 0 
and so the 0 gets transferred here. And then if you multiply 8 by 0.625, you should get this number, the original number that you started with, which will go here. So this is the most significant uh, digit, and above we have the least significant digit. So we're going to read it from the bottom to the top. So 348 base 10 as a decimal number is equivalent to 534 or 534 in the octal system. And so that's how you can convert a decimal number into an octal number using successive division. Now let's talk about how to convert the decimal number into a hexadecimal number using successive division. So let's use the same number, 348. Let's convert it to a hexadecimal number. Now the hexadecimal number is basically a number in the base 16 system. So this time, instead of dividing by 2 or 8, we're going to divide by 16. So if we take 348 and divide it by 16, this will give us 21.75. And so that's 21 remainder. To find the remainder, multiply 16 by 0.75. So 16 times 0.75, that's 12. So it's 21 remainder 12. Now let's take 21 and then let's divide that by 16. So 21 divided by 16 is 1.3125. And so we have one remainder. Now let's multiply 16 by 0.3125. And that's going to give us 5. So it's one remainder 5. Next, take 1 divided by 16. Now we know 1 doesn't go into 16. So 16 goes into 1 0 times with a remainder of whatever you see here. In this case, a remainder of 1. And so we're going to read it this way. So we have a 1, a 5, and a 12. Now 12, because it's larger than 9, we need to convert it to a letter. So remember, 10 corresponds to A, 11 corresponds to B, and 12 corresponds to C. So it's 1, 5, C. So therefore, we could say this. 348 in the base 10 system is 1, 5, C in the base 16 system. And so that's how we can convert a decimal number into a hexadecimal number using successive division. Operation on binary numbers. The arithmetic operation of binary numbers are namely addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of binary numbers are almost similar to those of decimal system. Addition of binary numbers. Adding two or more binary numbers is one of the arithmetic operations on binary numbers or base two number system. So there are rules in addition of binary numbers. So first, 0 plus 0 is equal to 1. 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. 1 plus 0 is equal to 1. And 1 plus 1 is equal to 0 carry 1. So in the next slide, I will show you a video on how to, how to add in binary numbers. In this tutorial, I go over how to do binary addition in the easiest possible method. So, let's start with the four basic rules. Also, you will need powers of 2 to convert each binary number into a decimal number. Now, let's work on some example problem. The first thing you should do is you should line up these numbers like this, and then add up the numbers column by column, starting with the column on the right side. 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is just 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, plus 1 equals 0, carry 1, 0 plus 1 is just 1. The third column, 1 plus 0 equals 1, plus 1 equals 0, carry 1, 0 plus 1 equals 1, plus 0, 
equals 1. So the fourth column, 1 plus 1 equals 0. Carry 1, 0 plus 0 plus 0 is just 0. And add 1 is just 1. 1 plus 0 equals 1 plus 1 equals 0. Carry 1, 0 plus 0 plus 1 equals 1. In the last column, 1 plus 1 equals 0. Carry 1, 0 plus 1 plus 1 equals 0. Carry 1, 0 plus 1 equals 1. 1 plus 1 equals 0. Carry 1, bring down 1. Always remember to add 2 digits at a time to keep it simple. Also, always work on one column at a time. Now, to check the work, Let's convert each binary number into a decimal number. In this row, let's add all the numbers that has 1 and ignore the 0. So let's add all the 1's in this row. 128 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 7 equals 191. Fourth row, 2 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 equals 58. Third row, 2 plus 4 plus 32 equals 38. Second row, 2 plus 4 plus 16 plus 32 equals 54. Now let's add the top row, 1 plus 8 plus 32 equals 41. Now let's sum up all of this from top row to fourth row. And the answer is 191 and so we can see that we have the right answer now you can try to solve this problem you can leave your answer in the comment section below subtraction of binary numbers subtraction is one of the four binary operations where we perform the subtraction method for two binary numbers or comprising only two digits, 0 and 1. So rules for subtraction of binary numbers, 0 minus 0 is equal to 0, 0 minus 1 is equal to 1 with a borrow of 1, 1 minus 0 is equal to 1, and 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So in the next slide, I will show you a video on how to subtract on binary numbers. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to subtract numbers in binary. First of all, always remember these four basic rules. 1 minus 1 equals 0, 0 minus 0 equals 0, 1 minus 0 equals 1, 0 minus 1 equals 1 with a borrow. Also, there's powers of 2 in here. This is where we're going to look if you want to know the decimal equivalent of each binary number. Now, let's work on this problem. Okay, the first thing you should do is to line up these numbers like this. And then, subtract the numbers column by column, starting with the right side. In the first column, 0 minus 0 equals 0. Second column, 0 minus 1 is cannot be, so we'll have to borrow on the left side. As we can see, this is also 0. And of course, we can't borrow anything from zero. So finally, there is one. So now we can borrow. Now let's take one and make this a zero. And the zero here will become two. Next, let's borrow from two and this becomes one. And the zero here will become two. Next, let's borrow from two and this becomes one. And the zero here will become two. Now we can continue solving. Two minus one equals one. 1 minus 1 equals 0, 1 minus 1 equals 0, 0 minus 0 equals 0, 1 minus 1 equals 0. There's 1 here, so we can just bring it down. Let's convert our answer, which is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 into decimal. If you want to confirm your answer, just convert each binary numbers into decimal. Let's add all the 1's in this row and ignore the zeros. 2 plus 64 equals 66. 16 plus 32 plus 64 equals 112. Second row, 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 32 equals 46. 112 minus 46 
equals 66. And so, we can see that we have the right answer. The 2 here is in decimal form. And in binary, it is equivalent to 1, 0. Now, you can try to solve this problem. You can leave your answer in the comment section below. Multiplication of binary numbers. The binary multiplication operation is actually a process of addition and shifting operation. And this process has to be continued until all the multiplier is done and finally the addition operation is made. Similar to the decimal system, the multiplication of the binary numbers is done by multiplying the multiplicand with the multiplier. It is noted that the multiplication by zero makes all the bits zero and this step may be ignored in the intermediate steps. So the rules. Zero times zero is equal to zero. Zero times one is equal to zero. One times zero it is is equal to zero. Then one times one is equal to one. The next video, uh, I'm going to show you how to multiply uh, binary numbers. Today, we're gonna be discussing binary multiplication. Here are the four basic rules. 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. Also, there's powers of 2 in here. This is where we're going to look if you want to know the decimal equivalent of each binary number. Now, let's try to solve this problem. Let's start right over here. So, we multiply 0 times 1 is 0. Any number multiplied by 0 is simply 0. So, let's just put zeros here. Next, it's also 0. So, let's just put another zeros here. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Here's the last number to be multiplied. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 times 1 is 1. We are done multiplying. Now, let's add all of these numbers. Let's start right over here. As you can see, you can just bring down this number. Second column, 0 plus 0 is 0. Third column, 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1. Fourth column, 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is simply 0. 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 1 plus 1 is 0, carry 1. Next column, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry 1. And 0 plus 1 is 1. Last column, 1 plus 1 is is 0 carry 1 bring down 1 so to check if our answer is correct let's convert each binary numbers into decimal let's add all the ones here 4 plus 8 plus 32 plus 128 plus 512 equals 684 now let's add the top row 1 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 equals 57 second row 4 plus 8 equals 12. Now, let's multiply 12 by 57. And the answer is 684. Now, we can see that we have the right answer. Now, you can try to solve this problem. You can leave your answer in the comment section below. Division of binary numbers. The binary division operation is similar to the base 10 decimal system, except the base 2. The division is probably one of the most challenging operation or basic arithmetic operation. There are different ways to solve division problem using binary op operations. Long division is one of them and the easiest and the most efficient way. So rules, 1 divided by 1 is equal to 1. 1 divided by 0 is, is equal to meaningless. 0 divided by 1 is equal to 0, then 0 divided by 0 is equal to meaningless. So, in, in the video that I'm going to show you is, uh, 
she used the long division method in solving for division of binary numbers. This video is about how to divide in binary numbers. The process of binary division is similar to long division in the decimal system. Now, let us try to solve this problem. As you can see, our divisor has three digits. So the next step is to look for three digits in our dividend. Now ask yourself, is 101 greater than or equal to 111? Obviously, no. So let's grab another digit here. Then again, ask yourself, is 1011 greater than or equal to 111? The answer is yes. So let's put 1 on top. Then let's multiply 1 to 111. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. So the next step is to subtract these numbers. Let's start right over here. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus 1 cannot be, so let's borrow from 1. Then this 0 here becomes 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. After subtracting, let's bring down the number on its side. So again, ask yourself, is 1 0 0 1 greater than or equal to 1 1 1? Yes. So let's put 1 on top. Then, let's multiply 1 to 1, 1, 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Next, let's subtract these numbers. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus 1 cannot be. So, in that case, we'll have to borrow from the larger number. So, let's make this a 0. Then, the 0 here will become 2. And again, the 0 here needs to borrow. So, we'll have to take from 2 and this becomes 1 and the 0 here becomes 2. Now let's subtract 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 minus nothing is just 0. After subtracting, bring down the number on each side. So we have 1, 0, 0. Is it greater than or equal to 1, 1, 1? The answer is no. So let's put 0 here. Then, let's multiply 0 to 1, 1, 1. 0 times 1 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. Now, let's subtract. 1, 0, 0 minus 0 is 1, 0, 0. This is what we call a remainder. Now, if you want to check your answer, let's multiply our divisor to our quotient. 0 times 1 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1. Again, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1. Then, let's add all these numbers. Let's bring down 0. Second column, 0 plus 1 is 1. Third column, 0 plus 1 plus 1 is 0, carry 1. Next, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry 1. And 0 plus 1 is 1. Last column, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry 1. So, if you have remainder, do not forget to add it here. Then, our answer here must be similar to our dividend. Now, we can see that our answer is correct. Now, you can try to solve this problem. You can leave your answer in the comment section below.